and the year is 1802, and Joseph Proust is not happy. The sun hasn't risen yet, and a lonely oil lamp in his study projects his flickering shadow over the many strange tubes and glasses and bottles of his lab as he paces back and forth in frustration. He is one of the new radical atomists. These are p people who believe in atoms, just like you and me. Lately, he has been trying to piece together how atomic theory explains the observed behavior of chemical reactions. And he's currently pacing his lab at 4 a.m. because his fellow scientists who doubt atomic theory have attacked him and his ideas. And he feels he needs to de better defend his theories. And he's been trying to figure out how to create a chemical equation based on these two ideas. So number one, the theory of the conservation of mass, which you and I have discussed and studied already, and we buy. Uh, and the other idea is the, the atomist belief that everything is made of atoms. So can he unite these two ideas and create this thing we call chemical equations? So remember, chemical equations describe how atoms and molecules recombine into different molecules. Here is a classic example of sodium and chlorine combining together to, uh, and reacting to form salt. So, sodium, one sodium atom plus one chlorine atom can react to form sodium chloride. But what if it looks like this? And we don't know. Two sodiums plus one chlorine goes to a molecule of Na2Cl, still table salt. But what if it's, what if it takes four sodiums to combine with three chlorines to make Na3, actually Na4Cl3, table salt. Or what if it's 151 sodium atoms plus 213 chlorine atoms gives Na151Cl213 table salt. What if all these are true? If you can mix any number of atoms of one element with any number of atoms of another, the same way you can combine like any amount of yellow paint with any amount of blue paint, nothing stopping you from doing that, then the atomic theory isn't very useful. Atomic theory, you would think, suggests that only specific numbers of atoms could combine to form molecules. So as morning approaches, the sky outside is turning a deep, gloomy gray. In exhausted frustration, Prowse is beginning to doubt himself and his conviction in atoms. He's got to be able to explain and be able to create chemical equations based on this theory. So looking around in the dim light at his chemicals and equipment, he calms himself. The critics say that atoms can combine in any ratio to form molecules. He will let an experiment decide that. Is there only a specific ratio with which atoms and molecules can combine? So let's try combining chemicals in different ratios and see what is left over. 